Please rise. Preserve me, O God, for in you I take refuge. I say to the Lord, you are my Lord. I have no good apart from you. As for the saints in the land, they are the excellent ones, in whom is all my delight. The sorrows of those who run after another God shall multiply. Their drink offerings of blood I will not pour out or take their names on my lips. The Lord is my chosen portion and my cup. You hold my lot. The lions have fallen for me in pleasant places. Indeed, I have a beautiful inheritance. I bless the Lord who gives me counsel. In the night also my heart instructs me. I have set the Lord always before me. Because he is at my right hand, I shall not be shaken. Therefore my heart is glad and my whole being rejoices My flesh also dwells secure. For you will not abandon my soul to Sheol, or let your Holy One see corruption. You make known to me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Let us join together in singing, Great is Thy Faithfulness.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ who saves us through faith. The love of the Father who gifts us with every good gift. And the communion of the Holy Spirit who fills us with all wisdom. Be with you all. Let us pray. O oh Lord God, You left to us a wonderful sacrament, a memorial of Your passion. Grant, we beseech You, that we may so partake of this sacrament of Your body and blood, that the fruits of Your redemption may continually be manifest in us. For You live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. As often as we eat of the bread and drink of the cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until He comes. Therefore, let us examine ourselves that we may eat of the bread and drink of the cup, receiving in faith the grace of God which is poured out upon us through this Holy Supper. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. Lost in our own selfish concerns, we often fail to consider to the needs of those around us. We pray that you would open our eyes to one another and strengthen the communion we share as fellow members of the body of Christ. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for you. And for His sake, God forgives you all your sins. For here in the sacrament you receive from Christ's lips the forgiveness of sins, which contains and conveys God's grace and Spirit with all His gifts, protection, defense, and power. Amen. You may be seated. The first reading is found in the book of Exodus, chapter 24, verses 3 through 11. It can be found on page 76 in your pew Bibles. Moses came and told the people of all the, world, all the words of the Lord and all the rules. And all the people answered with one voice and said, All the words that the Lord has spoken we will do. And Moses wrote down all the words of the Lord. He rose early in the morning and built an altar at the foot of the mountain and twelve pillars according to the twelve tribes of Israel. And he sent young men of the people of Israel who offered burnt offerings and sacrificed peace offerings of oxen to the Lord. And Moses took half of the blood and put it in basins, and half of the blood he threw against the altar. Then he took the book of the covenant and read it in the hearing of the people. And they said, All that the Lord has spoken we will do, and we will be obedient. And Moses took the blood and threw it on the, on the people and said, Behold the blood of the covenant that the Lord has made with you in accordance with all these words. Then Moses and Aaron, Nadab and Abihu, and seventy of the elders of Israel went up, and they saw the God of Israel. There was under his feet, as it were, a pavement of sapphire stone, like the very heaven for clearness. And he did not lay his hand on the chief men of the people of Israel. They beheld God and ate and drank. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us read responsibly Psalm 116, verses 12 through 19. What shall I render to the Lord for all his benefits to me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his sin. O Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant, the son of your maidservant. You have loosed my bonds. I will offer to you the sacrifice of thanksgiving 
and call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. In the courts of the house of the Lord, in your midst, O Jerusalem, praise the Lord. The second reading is found in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 10. It can be found on page 1038 in your pew Bibles. The cup of blessing that we bless, is it not a participation in the blood of Christ? The bread that we break, is it not a participation in the body of Christ? Because there is one bread, we who are many are one body. For we all partake of the one bread. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel is from the 14th chapter of St. Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. If you'd like to follow along, it's Mark 14, verses 12 through 26. You can find it on page 1011 in your pew Bibles. And on the first day of unleavened bread, when they sacrificed the Passover lamb, his disciples said to him, Where will you have us go and prepare for you to eat the Passover? And he sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the city, and a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him, and wherever he enters, say to the master of the house, The teacher says, Where is my guest room, where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? And he will show you a large upper room, furnished and ready, there prepared for there prepare for us and the disciples set out and went to the city and found it just as he had told them and they prepared the Passover and when it was evening he came with the twelve and as they were reclining at the table and eating Jesus said truly I say to you one of you will betray me one who is eating with me they began to be sorrowful and say to him one after another is it I He said to them, It is one of the twelve, one who is dipping bread into the dish with me. For the Son of Man goes as it is written of him, but woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that man if he had not been born. And as they were eating, he took bread, and after blessing it, broke it and gave it to them and said, Take this, take, this is my body. And he took a cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, and they all drank of it. And he said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. Truly, I say to you, I will not drink again of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. And when they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and our Savior Jesus the Christ. Amen, amen, amen. As we come on this as an extension, as we move forward throughout this week, it is an extension of where we began on Sunday and as we go up through Easter morning. A reminder, a remembrance of what all occurred and why it had to occur because we are all in need of a Savior. When we think of the Lord's Supper, it is such a great and wonderful gift that He has given to each and every one of us. Something that allows us to receive the fullness of the forgiveness of all our sin. What a wonderful gift to receive. What a wonderful blessing that we have been given through our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. It's one of those things that unites us all as we come together to the altar at the table where we trust in the words of our Lord where it says, this is my body, this is my blood, given and shed for you. One of the things that we struggle with so often is we like to try and make it about us and our understanding of things. 
But what Jesus is saying, he's saying, this is my body. We trust his words and we receive what he says. It is his body. It is his blood. That is what we believe. That is what we trust. Not because I say it, not because anybody says it, not because I sacrifice him on the altar again, but because our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ, has said that this is his body and this is his blood. And we trust in that. So often we come realizing that we come with a mindset that this may be something that we earned or something that we deserve, but the reality is this. We do not deserve this gift. Our Lord died on the cross for our sins because we are broken. We are sinful. We all are in need of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. We all are in need of the redemption which He has to offer for each and every one of us. We all are in need for the blessing and the promise of this. When He went into this upper room, when He was preparing this meal, when He was sitting with His disciples, and He washed their feet to start off, and when they're sitting at table, and they're receiving this great blessing, and gave this new commandment. He was offering a greater promise. He was offering something so wonderful, so, that, so beautiful that not even they understood it at the time. But as we look back and we remember, we can see this great gift that He has given to us. Sometimes I don't know that we focus on it enough as we should. That we realize exactly what it is that God is doing and where He is at work within us and within our lives. Now I remember when I was uh, going through seminary, I came through the ELCA and the Florida Bahamas Synod and one of the things that uh, they required of me is that in, in, in February, they required all seminarians to come. So I had to suffer in the middle of February to get on a plane and fly out of St. Paul, Minnesota, or Minneapolis, Minnesota, and I had to suffer going to Florida. And I took that suffering very well there. Um, it, was, it was really hard for me in the middle of February. But we would go, and I remember at one of these times that I was there, they had a speaker, a pastor, and he gave a great talk on helping understand the Lord's Supper. And it always will stick in my mind the words and the imagery that he put in my head. Because he says we don't come to the table with really, we don't come to the table with anything to offer except one thing, a broken and contrite heart, our sinful selves. We are all empty beggars that we come to this table and we walk to the table with our hands empty and folded and they tremble as we come to receive this great heavy gift that we do not deserve we have not earned and we receive within our hands as we come with nothing but all of our sin and our shame and all of the brokenness that we have and he places and the pastor places in our hands this great gift the body of our lord and our savior jesus christ and we take that within us, and then with trembling hands we receive His blood. And in that we receive the promise of forgiveness, which He gives to us all. Now my wife, now one thing I'll say is sometimes it's good to listen to wives. Actually, it's always good to listen to wives. My wife... My wife mentioned in the service, she's like, yes, I may have used the wrong word. I said boldness. And she said, no, you should probably come to the altar with boldness. So it's probably the wrong word. 
but I am troubled by some that come with a prideful spirit. That might be a better way of saying it. A prideful spirit as if they deserve our Lord's body and blood. And it always troubles me when I've seen people walk up and stride up as if this is something that they have truly earned for themselves, that it's something they deserve. It is their right to partake. Now, yes, we can come with boldness in the sense that we have the bold understanding that when we receive our Lord's body and blood, even as sinful and broken as we are, that we receive a great promise of forgiveness. But we also come to the altar with a great sense of humility because this is something God has done for us. He has given His body and His blood for us for the forgiveness of our sins. He died upon the cross for us for the forgiveness of our sins. He suffered for us for the forgiveness of our sins. He who had no sin took took all of our sin upon Himself so that we could know His forgiveness. He suffered the humiliation and the beating and the mocking for us. And when we come to the altar, when we come to the table, we come as a confession. As a confession that we are all sinners in need of the salvation of our Lord. That we are sinful. When we walk to the altar, we are admitting to the world, making a public profession to the world that we believe and understand ourselves to be sinful and broken. And Jesus Christ is our only hope. Our only source of salvation. Our only source of forgiveness. Our only source of renewal. And our souls hunger. Hunger. To receive within ourselves the one thing that will feed that hunger of our souls is our Lord's body and blood that fills the void within us and satiates the hungry soul that needs to know the forgiveness of sin. To know that God has given us all the promise of new life through His body and His blood. And we receive it not because we believe it, Or not because we have to believe it, we should believe it. But it is His body and blood, whether or not we do believe it. Because our Lord says it is. In, with, and under. In that bread, in that wine, is our Lord's body, is our Lord's blood. Because our Lord Jesus Christ has given us these words. And when we believe and trust in that, we receive everything that He promises to us. The forgiveness of our sin. One of the issues that always comes in my mind and why I so think about the image of how to come to this. Because I've seen, I've seen people mock the Lord's Supper. How I remember 
when I was still in seminary. And I was serving at a little parish as a youth minister. And a man that had served in the band came to a special service, a little intimate communion service being held. And he strode up the center of the aisle. And in a moment, He put upon himself all of his own sin because he said, I don't need anyone to bring about my forgiveness. I have done the sin myself. I will find a way of forgiveness myself. And then he took within his body the bread and the wine, the body and the blood, and walked away. We come with great humility to the altar because there is no way that we can find forgiveness on our own. There is no way that we can know new life and eternal life with our Lord and our Father in heaven on our own. But it is through Christ and Christ alone as we receive His body and His blood, as we receive the fullness of His forgiveness, as we lay out our confession before Him, realizing that we are sinful and broken and in need of His forgiveness, that we receive what is promised to us in that moment. And we receive within ourselves His body and His blood and the new life that He gives to each and every one of us who trust and believe in Him. And the hunger in our souls to desire to receive that as often as we can. Because it is the one thing that we need at all times. When we receive His body and blood into ourselves, we are the purest we can ever be for that moment. Because we are fully forgiven and we are fully refreshed and we are fully renewed and we are fully restored. Because our Lord has died and risen. And it all began in a little room one night with his disciples in the breaking of the bread and the drinking from the cup. And out of that cup was poured upon the entire world. peace of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. May that give you peace. May that peace, that glorious peace, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in the one true faith of Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 Let us all rise and join together in the hymn of the day, O Sacred Head, Now Wounded.
let us confess our faith in the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, calling to mind the promises we are given through the Supper of our Lord. What is Holy Communion? Holy Communion is the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, given with bread and wine, instituted by Christ himself for us to eat and drink. What benefits do we receive from this sacrament? The benefits of the sacrament are pointed out by the words given and shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. These words assure us that in the sacrament we receive the forgiveness of sins, life, and salvation. For where there is forgiveness of sins, there is also life and salvation. How can eating and drinking do all this? It is not eating and drinking that does this, but the words given and shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. These words, along with eating and drinking, are the main thing in the sacrament. And whoever believes these words has exactly what they say, forgiveness of sins. Upon this affirmation, let us now confess our faith in God and all that God has done in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Gracious Father, thank you for sending your only Son, Jesus Christ, to be our Lord and Savior. Let us work towards humbly serving and loving others as Jesus modeled for us. It is through the power of the Holy Spirit that we become more Christ-like. Help us to embrace his new commandment and love others as he has first loved us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty Counselor, guide us daily through your word so we may pray in the Spirit at all times. Give us the words to boldly proclaim the gospel of our Lord and Savior to those who do not know of your, prom your promise of eternal life. Open their hearts and minds to hear your word of salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, let us be a witness to your healing powers and salvation through your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant to your servants to continue to speak your word with all boldness while you stretch out your hand to heal, and signs and wonders are performed through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty healer and friend, let us not give up praying for the healing strength and endurance for all those who suffer in some way. May they be strengthened with all power, according to his glorious might, for all endurance and patience with joy. Comfort and console all those we love, and bring rest to the weary and heavy laden. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In the night in which our... Well, let's get up. Let me get this supper ready. the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. He gave thanks and he broke it. And he gave it to all of his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. 
Again, after they all had supped, he took the cup, he gave thanks, and he gave it to all of his disciples, saying, Take and drink. This cup is a New Testament in my blood, given and shed for you, for the forgiveness of all your sins. Do this as often as you drink of it, in remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom, and teach us all to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The table is now ready. Come and eat.
Jesus, right? Heavenly Father, you sent the one who knew no sin to be sin for our sake. Nourish us with the bread and wine of this meal and build us up through Christ's body and blood that we may live and serve in your holy name. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. May be seated. Prepare your hearts for the offering. God of love, you have provided for our every need from your abundant bounty. Grant us grateful hearts that we may give generously to those in need and thereby show your love to the world around us. Amen. Let us join together in singing, Go to Dark Gethsemane.
my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from saving me from the words of my groaning? Oh, my God, I cry by day, but you do not answer. And by night, but I find no rest. Yet you are holy, enthroned on the praises of Israel. In you our fathers trusted. They trusted, and you delivered them. To you they cried and were rescued. And in you they trusted and were not put to shame. But I am a worm and not a man, scorned by mankind and despised by the people. All who see me mock me. They make mouths at me. They wag their heads. He trusts in the Lord. Let him deliver him. Let him risk rescue him, for he delights in him. Yet you are he who took me from the womb. You made me trust you at my mother's breast. On you was I cast from my birth, and from my mother's womb you have been my God. Be not far from me, for trouble is near, and there is none to help. Many bulls encompass me, strong bulls of Bashan surround me. They open wide their mouths in me, like a ravening and roaring lion. I am poured out like water, and all my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax. It is melted within my breast. My strength is dried up like a pot's herd, and my tongue sticks to my, my jaws. You lay me in the dust of death, for dogs encompass me. A company of evildoers encircles me. They have pierced my hands and feet. I can count all my bones. They stare and gloat over me. They divide my garments among them, and for my clothing they cast lots. But you, O Lord, do not be far off. O you, my help, come quickly to my aid. Deliver my soul from the sword, my precious life from the power of the dog. Save me from the mouth of the lion. You have rescued me from the horns of the wild oxen. I will tell of your name to my brothers. In the midst of the congregation, I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you offspring of Jacob, glorify him and stand in awe of him, all you offspring of Israel. For he has not despised or abhorred the affliction of the afflicted, and he has not hidden his face from him, but has heard when he cried to him. From you comes my praise in the great congregation. My vows I will perform before those who fear him. The afflicted shall eat and be satisfied. Those who seek him shall praise the Lord. May your hearts live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord. And all the families of the nations shall worship before you. For kingship belongs to the Lord. And he rules over the nations. All the prosperous of the earth eat and worship. Before him shall bow, bow all who go down to the dust, even the one who could not keep himself alive. Posterity shall serve him. It shall be told of the Lord to the coming generation. They shall come and proclaim his righteousness to a people yet unborn, that he has done it. <clears throat> 